Hey, LinkedIn, and welcome to Business Unusual. This is a live show where we talk about the way coronavirus is impacting the way we work. I am Susie Jackson. I'm a news editor at LinkedIn, joining you live from my home in New York City. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about creativity. As we talk about it, I want to hear from you. I want you to drop your comments into the stream, use the hashtag Business Unusual. Tell us, are you feeling creative in quarantine? Is it giving you uh, opportunities to try new hobbies you've always wanted to do but never had time? Um, are you trying new things? Are you a creative professional who has to work in new ways because you can't go outside and photograph the world? Um, or are you a normal person, more like me? Maybe a stick figure is more in your repertoire, um, but you're too busy or too anxious or, or too anything. Your head's full of everything else. You, you can't find time to be creative. I'm a little bit more in that boat. I am working from home uh, full time with my husband who's working full time. We have two small children. I see some colleagues talking about taking classes in mixology or how to be a DJ, and I'm extremely jealous. I, I don't have the headspace whatsoever to do something like that, but uh, I know other people are in different situations, and it's kind of interesting when everyone's experiencing something all together, um, but still experiencing it in very different ways. So today we're gonna to talk a lot about creativity. Um, on either side, are you feeling blocked or not? Um, are you plowing through your favorite streaming service and, and getting your nourishment creatively that way by enjoying things? Um, are you learning to knit? Are you reading more? Are you writing more? Um, I've asked people in uh, creative industries on LinkedIn what quarantining has meant for them, and we got over 650 responses. So we're going to be looking at some of that work throughout the show today. People were writing in, talking about their novel projects, talking about their painting, talking about um, creating video games, also saying that sometimes it's hard and they don't have enough headspace to be able to do that, uh, even though there are creative people um, in their souls. Uh, I want to hear from you. What side of this equation are you on? Are you finding yourself more or less creative? Are you finding a silver lining in all of this? Or is it really too much to even think about and wrap your head around? Um, we are going to have a really special guest on today. Jerry Saltz will be joining us. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning art critic. He is the senior art critic for New York Magazine and the author of a new book called, fittingly for this show, How to Be an Artist. So we're going to bring on Jerry in a few minutes. Um, we're also going to do a fun activity with Jerry. So stay with us throughout the show. If you are feeling a little bit blocked, we're going to do something that should give your creativity a little kickstart. And uh, neither Jerry nor I are really ready for this. So it's going to be wildly entertaining, I think, for you to watch and I hope for you to participate with us. Um, before we bring on Jerry, I wanted to look at a little bit of what people are saying on LinkedIn about creativity. Uh, the first comment I wanted to pull up is from Rod. Um, he says that artists are feeling uh, that they're having trouble focusing right now, but that he thinks that once you start the creative process and get into the zone, um, the cares of the world disappear, at least for a while, Rod says. He thinks that it's better to get into a flow state like this and be creative than a lot of the other things that people are doing to escape the stress associated with being quarantined. I know uh, liquor sales are way up. Um, maybe being creative and doing an art project is maybe a little bit better for your health, your mental health, um, than just hitting the bottle at night. Uh, but on the other hand, we have, we've here from Tyna, who, she's a musician. Um, this is not Tyna, this is Tyna's daughter. She's in a situation like me where she is trying to work full time. Her husband is trying to work full time from home. He is in a role where he's on the phone a lot. So Tyna, he's a singer songwriter. She has to be quiet. It's kind of uh, difficult to do that work when you have to be quiet all the time. And when you're homeschooling, she's now homeschooling her children, um, trying to figure out how to keep them occupied throughout the day. Uh, we have a comment from Sierra, who is an art student. And she, she comes to us with a tip. She finds that taking moments to step away from the screen has really helped her uh, clear her mind. It's allowed her to get back into painting, which is something that she's really happy to have the time to do now. And it's, it's actually making her feel really good. Um, and one more kind of prescriptive tip comes from Liz, who shared that she gives herself an assignment. She is creating an apple a day. So clever plan words, but also really simple. It's this one little thing to do each day. Um, it doesn't have to be a massive undertaking starting the great American novel. You could just draw an apple a day. So Liz shared a few of these with us and uh, she has even more. It's really neat to, to filter through them all and see how um, each day she's finding something else a little bit different uh, and inspiring. 
Uh, but for more tips and, and from really from an expert on this topic, I wanted to bring in my guest, Jerry Saltz. I mentioned Jerry is the book, uh, the author of a book, How to Be an Artist. He is the senior art critic at New York Magazine. He's revered in the field. Um, Jerry, come on, come on over. How are you doing today? Hello, LinkedIn. You, This is the first time I've ever been on this uh, for 10 years, I kept getting LinkedIn emails and I deleted them because I didn't know what they were. And here I am, first time caller, first time listener. Great to meet all of you. That's great, Jerry. We're very glad to have you. Um, we'll try to stop sending you so many emails. I'm sorry about that, but we're glad to have you now. And I know that the members tuning in are delighted to hear from you. Um, you even volunteered to critique some of the art that we're going to see. So um, know that they were not necessarily prepared for that, so be kind. Um, but I think that's a real treat for anyone. Uh, you're, you're a legend in your field. Um, you describe yourself as a failed artist. Uh, you also say that anyone who's not creating art is a failed artist. So I'm not creating art right now. Maybe by the end of the show, I will be. Um, but talk to me about that. What, what, what can art do to help us through a time like this? There, it's a great question, uh, Susan. We all have to remember something. Art creativity was with us in the caves. It's in every bone in your body. Darwin said it wasn't survival of the fittest or the strongest. It was a terrible misunderstanding. Darwin said it was survival of those most able to adapt. And now with this terrible, terrible angel of death walking amongst us, we are all forced to adapt in all sorts of ways, all at once. And the interesting thing about creativity, Susan, is that it thrives under exactly the conditions all of you are listening to right now. Listen, it thrives under pressure. It thrives in smaller places in intimate settings. It thrives when what you're trying to do, if you can see my desk, there's a billion things all around me. When you're, what you're trying to do is going on here and right next to you, the kids are going insane. Nana is back there like cooking, uh, like your significant other is annoying you and the dog won't get off of your lap. What we need to understand is 99% of all the things our species ever made, they were created in a situation exactly like this, where the home, the studio, look at, look at that's Henry Matisse. He couldn't get out of bed. He was unable to walk. And what did he do? He took what energy he had and started drawing on the walls. The studio, the bedroom, the playroom, the kitchen, the pharmacy, the rec room, the shop, all of that has been one room for more or less 50,000 years. It's only recently that we've like specialized and become efficient. So I just want to tell everybody listening and then I will shut up is don't be afraid to be embarrassed because I absolutely guarantee you, you are going to be embarrassed. It's horrifying when I will listen back to what I just said to you and look at my hands going around or see how bald I am, a nightmare, but we all, must rise to this time because viruses come, but viruses go. Art and creativity are long. Art will only disappear when all the problems it was invented to address have been addressed. Every person who has ever made anything, that includes you, has been embarrassed. You have to get lost in that process. It's a lot like Rod said in that first comment that Susan read, you get lost. That's when time disappears. Bob Dylan said, yeah, it's like a ghost wrote those songs. And I promise you, if you get out of your own way with the, I'm, I'm a bad artist, I have a bad neck, my hair is bad, I'm not creative. 
when all of those demons and you just go, too bad, I'm making an apple a day anyway, the changes that you make now, the things you do now, the things you're modeling for yourself and for your children, you're going to take forward for the rest of your life. It's beautiful. And I that's, love being- That is beautiful, Jerry. I mean, uh, that's great advice for me as a host of a live show that didn't exist six weeks ago. Don't be embarrassed. Yeah. Um, I don't want you to shut up also. And neither do people commenting on the stream. Um, Steven said, don't shut up, Jerry. We love you. So people are already loving you. Uh, Karen agrees, don't shut up. Please tell us more. And please don't shut up. This is That was my first question. Um, I want to take a couple quick comments. Nathaniel says that this time is definitely boosting his creativity. He says, I'm making more content than I ever have before the yeah. quarantine. So Nathaniel, that's wonderful. We saw Matisse, he's he can't walk and he's using a stick to draw on the wall. Nathaniel, you're there too. You're making more than you ever did before. Uh, Beatrice says that she's still doing her podcast and poetry. Jill says that she feels more creative uh, looking at new ways to keep busy, such as joining some classes and reading more often. Um, these are these are great things. It's really nice to see that people are finding ways through this. So, so you've written this book, How to Be an Artist, and it's full of tips. What are some things that people who are already, <laughs> there you go, who are already um, classify themselves as artists who are watching, but also people like me who don't, what should we be doing to get started and just get going? Well, first, like I say, there's no right way or wrong way to make art. What I want all of you to do is don't worry about making it good. That's what I would call making it boring. You want to draw exactly like Leonardo da Vinci? I would say, good little humanist, good little humanist. But I'm not interested in you drawing like Leonardo da Vinci. I'm interested in you developing whatever crapola skills you have. I have no degrees. I was a long distance truck driver the only Jewish one, I might add. My CB handle was the Jewish cowboy. And I would get on and say, shalom partner. What I'm interested in you doing is the terrible thing that I'm doing with you right now. Make things in your own voice. You know that silly little poem that's been in your head? Write the stupid thing down. That funny dance you're going to do where you look a little like a duck when you turn, do it. Post it on Instagram. If you want to sew something, if you want to cut something out with scissors, if you want to paint something, start doing it in your own voice. Of course, you're going to be rejected. Of course, most of the things I do, they're not liked. You're being called right now by something much bigger than you. And if you get out of its way, learn to deal with those demons just that much. Really? Just go, oh, shut up, big voice that lives inside of my mouth, that is always in my mouth whenever you know I'm not working. You will be able to deal with that rejection. You will redefine success as time not fame and power and money the way it's been the last 15 years. I want all people to make money, the good, the bad, and the very bad, except one person, and I'm not ruining this podcast to say his name. Um, get to work, you big babies. You big babies. You're a baby. I'm a baby. Get to work a little right. bit. There's no wasted days. Everything that's in you, and then I'll shut up again. Um, everything that's in you will end up in your work in an abstract way, a secret way, but it'll be there. So all the procrastination you're doing, get off your butts, sit back down on your butts, don't get out of the chair, don't listen to the refrigerator calling your name. I, of course, told my refrigerator my first name, Rookie mistake. Don't do that because it'll call you all day. And work. Get lost. Make bad art for me and I will make it for you. Let's look at a couple of people who have gotten off their butts and have started to get to work. 
Um, we heard from Karthik, who's a UX designer. He came to LinkedIn to show us some of the, the things he's been getting into that he hasn't had time to before. He's been doing some painting, some photography. Um, he had a lovely quote where he said, he loves how the sunlight creates uh, light and shade in every corner of my living room. How did I miss that until now? I think that's a, it's a wonderful perspective on this. You're stuck in the house, but you're getting to do some things that you wanted to do and enjoying the beauty and things that you didn't have time to notice before. Um, another beautiful thing, we had Benjamin coming to LinkedIn to share some animation that he's doing. He is uh, creating a, a game based off his dog, Nynx. It's a traditional animated frame by frame 1930s style game called Nynx and Penny. You can see a little clip of it here. Um, I mean, that's pretty intense and full frame by frame animation. That's something that it, 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 maybe it's a gift to have this time to be able to sit and, and do. And he's got that inspiration. Um, Clary, I want to ask you, are you feeling creative these days? Where are you finding your inspiration? Um, first of all, I absolutely love those uh, two artists you showed me. I've never met a person in my entire life that's not creative. Again, every generation going back 50 to 75,000 years, you got here by a few things. One was luck. And the other was adaptability and creativity. It's in your DNA. Here's what I'm doing with my time. I'm the senior art critic for New York Magazine. And I've wanted to use this time to go deeper into my work, to ask bigger questions, listen to weird warblings that I've always sensed in great works of older art masterpieces. And if people want to go to uh, New York Magazine and Vulture.com, you can see some of my pieces. I wrote on a uh, 16th century masterpiece. I've written essays about what will the art world be like going forward? If 90% of the restaurants close, and David Chang, the chef, predicts that they will, might that affect art galleries too, which are the primary vehicle of delivering new art. These worlds are going to be rebuilt. So I'm trying to take every minute, write as hard as I can. I don't have another life, okay? Honestly, I am so boring. All I do is see 20 or 30 shows a week when I'm in New York, and then I go home, talk to demons, yell at my refrigerator and computer, and then I get to work. I want to tell you one person that said something about um, Liz talked about assignments. I would say assignments and deadlines come to you from heaven by way of hell. So once you decide, you know, I'm going to make that little funny pot or decorate that idiot basket that's been on top of my refrigerator. That's the deadline or assignment. And then you do go to hell while you're doing it going, I'm sure this is no good. All of that doesn't matter. Just make it bad. Okay. I promise you it's not as bad as you think. You can't be as big a loser as I am. I did not start writing until I was 40 years old and I won the Pulitzer Prize while working in this chair, in this office, in Northwest Connecticut uh, a year ago. Shock. It's a, that's, a, that's inspiring for, for everyone. So we're talking about people who are creatives or define themselves as creatives already, people who don't. And, and look at you, you were a truck driver and a year ago you won the Pulitzer Prize uh, on something that you only started later in life. So there's no excuse for anyone. You can do it, you can figure it out. Um, a couple of comments from the stream. Sarah is agreeing that she definitely feels boosted. There are so many distractions that are gone. I found that I can open my window and sit with my legs hanging out. That's still safe, I think. Um, never would have thought of that before. Nira says, oh, excuse me, Niara says that she tries to create even when she's not in the mood. She's hosting a music and art live on in her Instagram tonight to break out of her shell and connect. So some more, yeah, so thumbs up to, to, to both Niara. Um, uh, and everyone who's, who's sharing with us, you're finding ways to make it through. You're finding ways to connect with yourself um, and with others. Um, Jerry, I, I want to go to a couple more uh, things that people shared with us. This next one um, is really of the moment. 
It's uh, we've got people making masks. We've got Tin Y, Sarah, and Alyssa. Uh, Sarah is making masks for the doctors and nurses at Mass General Hospital in Boston. Alyssa is a student that is not commuting anymore, and she's using that time to dust off her sewing skills. Tin Y is looking for a design job, and she's doing this in the meantime. So helping people can be a different route to getting creative yourself and helping yourself. Um, that extends to, to other mediums as well. We have a, a couple people who are, are coming online to give music lessons. Chloe Flower is there on the left. She's teaching people at Farrelise on the piano. Um, Andrew Blaze Thomas is doing drum lessons and sporting a fabulous pair of loafers and some great socks. So thank you for the, for the visual interest in there, not just the drum lessons, Andrew. Um, and uh, also there's, it, it can be closer to home, the, the teaching that you can do. We have Phil, who is an architectural photographer, and he's been using this time to teach his teenage grandchildren how to fly drones. And his plan is to use them as licensed aerial photographers once the pandemic is under control. So there's a lot of ways to use creativity, not just to nurse yourself, but to find ways to connect with other people, to help with other people. Talk to me about that connection. Um, I'm interested in that, that art is often a way to express things or to show things that other people might not be uh, feeling on their own. And we're in this moment where we're all feeling some version of this, this stress or this experience at the same time. What does art look like after this, that we're all going to have this pretty common reference point across the world? Well, we are. First of all, that is a really good point. We're all going to share one big reference point. The examples you gave, Susan, are quite interesting that they show a lot of art's deepest mysteries. Think about the masks that we made. What is embedded in every single one of those objects? What holds in them in common? Love, attention, humanity, giving your material self energy and actual material, embedding that love in it and giving it away. All works of art, a Rembrandt looks at you from across the room and goes, I saw you looking at me. Come here. Come closer. I could change your life. I love you. Live with me. Or look at the drone photography. What's embedded in there? Invention, adaptability. I can't go out. I'll find a way to make something go out into the world for me. That is amazing. And notice too, the difference between the framing of this photograph and the beautiful still life that we saw earlier, the still life that we saw earlier, of course, was based in a kind of Dutch painting, still life, beautiful tradition. This photograph is based in the machine that we carry in our pocket that has the known universe inside of it somehow. It's a big mystery. And yet he's using this little weird thing that no one knows how to repair, but has a miracle inside of it to teach himself to see, see the world in a different way and his children. These examples just are a, a, a snowflake on the tip of the iceberg that's happening around you. When we go back to museums and galleries in our lives, but in my case, museums, I want to tell you all, look at the person next to you. And if you can do this without being obnoxious, go, what do you think? And you will find the same miracle that Susan has been showing you, that you've been sharing with her, that everyone is kind of brilliantly visionary, even if we're just idiots on this bus. <laughs> um, we have a Hammond who wants to thank you. He says you are helping so many of us continue and survive, Jerry. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Hammond, maybe Please you can thank Jerry for this or local bookstore. <laughs> um, Jerry, I want to look at uh, two more pieces of, of art that people have sent in, uh, and then you and I are going to do an activity. So just telling the viewers really quickly, 
This is Business Unusual. It is a live show on LinkedIn where we talk about the way coronavirus is impacting the way we work. We are talking about creativity today. We have the legendary Jerry Saltz with us, Pulitzer Prize winner, art critic for New York Magazine. We are looking at some of the lovely work that you have sent to us. We, uh, I asked the other day, what's going on with you? Are you? Do you feel like you're a creative professional? Do you feel like you're not a creative professional? You want to be more creative? You're blocked? Where are you? Show us what you're working on. And we had more than 650 of you come back to us with responses and showing us your work. So I want to show two more of those things, Jerry, before we get to our activity. And stick around for that activity because you can participate in it. Um, this is from Courtney, who is a graphic designer who loves to travel and really missed being able to get outside and travel. So she did a little project where she paired some of her landscape photography with these beautiful color swatches. So we've got uh, images from uh, California all the way to Denali National Park here. Um, I really, you know, well, actually, I, I shouldn't critique it, Jerry. I'm going to leave that to you. I really like the color in this. I like that it's just a simple thing. It combines two things that Courtney loves to work on. And she called it a simple little project, but it's making me happy. Do you know what Courtney's doing? I see the secret. Courtney, you can't fool me. Mwah, mwah, mwah. What Courtney did, she didn't just take color swatches. Look at the one from, say, Denali on my far right or Santa Monica. I'm jealous of all of you sheltering in place in the warm climates. I very much hate you. But look at either of those. Do you see what she's doing with the colors? Guess, Susan. Uh, gradient, uh, picking up colors in the palette. Those are my two guesses. Yes. She broke down the basic colors of each photograph through this idiot tool called the phone or the computer and uh, you know systematize what your eye is already seeing we have to remember that in one fifty thousand of a second before you identify the thing you see as mountains your eye is only seeing patterns colors uh, complete chaos and believe it or not, Courtney, you big, beautiful dummy, you're breaking down vision into its one fiftieth thousandth of a second before we organize it. Bravo, bravo. Keep doing it. Just keep bravo, doing Courtney. It. Jerry Saul giving you a big bravo. Into, but don't fall into a pattern. Then get lost again. You found a matrix. Now be willing to develop the matrix and then do the most daring thing of all. Let it go again and see where it goes. You never have to worry, this goes for everybody, about being consistent. Consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, said Emerson. Um, if we could look at one more before we do our project, Jerry. Um, we, at the big gulp, um, we have Jeremy who is representing our writers. Uh, it's a little harder for a writer to show their work to us in, a, in, a, in an ask like this, but Jeremy said that he is working on a book with his super creative daughter, Ella. It's an alphabet book to inspire other young girls with positive words. Thank you for that, Jeremy. I think that's lovely. It's lovely that you're doing it with someone in your family. Um, we had other writers coming to us to say that their work hasn't changed drastically. It's, it's kind of a solitary pursuit for most people. Um, we did have one writer say that he now had more time to narrate his own audiobooks and the audiobooks of friends. So different ways to create there, even if writing is something that maybe you're not used to um, having to go out in the world much to do it. Although a lot of people do love coffee shops and that's a blocker right now too. Um, Jerry, what do you think of, of the artwork on Jeremy's book? I'm thunderstruck because all children have an artistic practice. What happens is tragically, we train them to draw inside the lines. How many people listening? Either when they were a kid drew on the walls, your parents went bad crap. Um, you would lie on the floor looking at the ceiling, pretending the ceiling was the floor. You would lie and look at uh, dust motes floating through the air in your sunny apartment or home and think about the universe. You were an artist then. Your daughter, Jeremy, is doing important work 
that's creating gig a gigantic syntax in her mind right now. And just let it go. If she needs more than 26 letters, maybe 244 would do it. 155, maybe some would be images. We've had hieroglyphics in the sand for 7,000 years. We don't know what they mean, but we know they mean something. All right, Jerry, it is project time. Here's what my work, here's what my writing looks like. It's pathetic. It's colorful. There's some gradient going on in there too. Yeah. Um, you and I are going to do a project now and I want to invite everyone watching on the stream to, to join along with us. Um, I'm going to spring this surprise on Jerry right now. He doesn't know what the assignment is and neither do you. So you're all in this together. Um, Jerry, you and I are going to make a sculpture out of whatever we can find in our rooms that we're sitting in right now. So a lot of people are writing in saying that they're feeling blocked, not knowing where to start. I think let's just start right now. Let's start with something so simple. Like you, you've set us up beautifully by saying it's okay to be embarrassed or don't be embarrassed. Um, we're just going to do it. Um, I don't really have much of an advantage because I was too busy getting ready for the show to think of something clever. No, I do have an advantage of living with toddlers. So there's probably more like, crayons and things near me than maybe some of you, but maybe not. Some people are homeschooling. Um, I am going to let uh, my producers decide how much time that we have to do this, but I'm going to count us down. Are you feeling ready? Do you understand the assignment? So I just grab what's around me and how will you see it? Do I hold it up? Yes. I'm going to move my camera so that maybe people uh, can see me doing it, but you, I think, just go for it and figure out when to hold up things and tell us what you're doing. Let me see if I can move my, I work on a giant desktop. Can you see that table? I can see the table. I can see the lamp. You did say the room was full of good stuff. So okay. I think. here we go. Ready? All right. Sculpture. I'm going to move my computer. Three, two, one. Here we go. Look at this. This is a, who would know? Is it okay to do a naked thing? Is this acceptable? It's I, we're live, so I guess we'll have to find out. Um, I have my stuff. I'm getting some stuff. I think I might hear my kids coming home, which maybe is okay, because you said we got to create with what we have. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, sculpture. Let's see. I might hear my kids. You know what? I'm going to go tell them to come in. I'll be right here. I'll be right yeah. back. And it turns out that I speak painting. So look what I'm already doing. Can you see it at all? No. I just put this here. Oh. Making art is hard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. All right. So I found uh, a paper towel roll and some of this cool thread that's dipped in wax that I didn't know about when I was a kid, but apparently other people did. I've been telling everyone about it because I think it's great. Um, and I found an old dry erase marker that barely works. So I'm just going to get going. Although, you know what? I have googly eyes too, because like I said, I'm kind of cheating because I have kids around and we do a lot of art now that we're stuck inside. I don't know if I have any tape to put the googly eyes on and the box is really stuck shut. So we're either going to have Google eyes everywhere or I'll have to move on to something else. Let's see. I've got pencil. Maybe this could be an arm. Oh, it works. Okay. And Jerry, if you injure yourself while we're doing this, I can claim no responsibility. Uh, you're doing amazing. I'm cheating. You're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it looks like we only have a couple minutes left. I'm going to keep it. Okay. I'm almost done. You're almost done? Oh, Let's my gosh. All right. You me up, Jerry. Here's what I made. I hope you can see it. I'll try. Wait. Every artist makes up their own rules, and then they follow them, and then they follow those rules until they decide to break them. When Susan asked me to make sculpture, I right away noticed I was just doing something I didn't want to do. I was doing just a tableau, a setup. 
And I realized immediately that I think in no dimensions and two dimensions. So here's my painting. I just finished it. All right, let's see it, Jerry. You did a painting? Oh, okay. I, I love it. I love it. I get it. Beautiful. This it's beautiful. is the advice I give to all of you. Don't look at Susan's sculpture or my painting and say, I wish I could do that. Now let's see Susan's because she's good. Well, thank you. I was going to make a joke that people will look at this and they're not going to say, I wish I could do that. But here, <laughs> here we have my sculpture. Wow. It's bearded. You're not supposed to have a beard right now, says the CDC, but it's art, it, right? It can be whatever it needs to be. Does your husband have a beard? He did until a few days ago. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she loves her husband and she made a monstrosity. She made a gargoyle. Do you know what a gargoyle <laughs> is? Tell them what a gargoyle is, Susan. Oh, a, a, a sentinel, right? A watcher. Right. And I'll show you how Chinese sculpture looks outside of their tombs like this. <laughs> Should we do our best gargoyles right now? Our what? Our best gargoyle. I'm going to do one yeah. for you, too. Um, I'm also seeing that what our producer, Stephen, did this project with us. So I'd like to invite Stephen to come on right now and show us what he did, too. Yes, I did. So I took my water bottle and things around me. And I have this Warren Buffett ducky. Wow. He's sailing. Wait, you see? So I made an oar out of my pencil. And then, you know, a little sail here. So like That is brilliant. Look at the technology on that. You understand, right? That even Neanderthals found a way to make what he was making to capture the wind to take their fortune along the coast of the Red Sea and cross the Red Sea into the Middle East. I mean, is that insane what he did and what she did? We have Gothic architecture and gargoyles on the one hand, and one of the most advanced technologies, our species, and one of the most daring ever developed. So you big babies, if those idiots, if those idiots can do it, and I failed even worse, You'll you can't fail much worse than the three of us. <laughs> you may have just called Stephen a Neanderthal, but I think he'll still be pleased with your critique. Um, Jerry, it was really lovely to have you. I hope everyone watching, I hope you did the activity with us. I would love it if you would take a picture of what you created and use the hashtag business unusual to post it to LinkedIn. You can tag me as well. Um, uh, Susan Jackson is how you would tag me. I would love to see what you created. Um, Stephen, thank you for doing it with us too. Jerry, it was really wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for being my guest today. I hope that all of you will follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's, uh, you know, there's a red picture there. Jerry, Jerry Salts, okay? And if you build it, I will come. There's 1 million people there, but I answer every person. Keep, I'm going to my book at a local bookstore. Really? It will really, really help you. You'll be surprised that even I could write what I wrote. I am. Well, and Jerry, I know you're kind of an internet star. You uh, went viral the other day for loading up your trunk with like 25 cups of to-go coffee. So follow Jerry for some very entertaining and creative sparking content. Jerry, thank you for joining us. Susan, all of you, I miss you. We'll see each other when all of this is over. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you, Jerry. And thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you for bearing with whatever white thing is in the corner of my screen right now. I don't know. We're doing art. Um, we are here, Business Unusual, every day, every weekday from the LinkedIn editor's page at noon. On Monday, uh, my colleague Jordan Dahl will be joining us on the show to talk more about small businesses and the small business loans that are happening right now. A lot of questions going on about that. Um, thanks for joining me today. Again, post your pictures of your art project to LinkedIn. Use the hashtag business unusual at tag me Susan Jackson if you'd like me to see them. Thank you for being with us today. Stay safe out there.